it's a very pleasant evening just approaching 1800 hours which is 6 p.m. in old money this is Clipson Old Quarter and it seems the ideal conditions for glowworm larva tonight so it's a case of me doing a wheezy wander up and down sections A in which we're in now B, C and ending right at the top in section D and coming back down again it works out about two miles if I remember right the length of this grass strip is about 1100 yards or 1100 meters good as a mile in it it is in my book anyway Now hopefully some of the glowworm larva, if any, are on this path this evening, will be alive. It's been a lovely, beautiful day today, a lovely spring day. It's starting to cloud up now. We've got this cirrus stratus moving in, which is the sign of a front, presumably. The narrowness of the path means that glowworm larva have less area to wander across or down through. And they tend often to come right down the middle of the path as you can see from there so does every mountain biker that comes into this part of Sherwood Forest it's not their fault but they do kill a lot of glowworms I think it's nine that are found so far this spring four of those have been crushed underfoot or under bicycle wheel but the path being so narrow in this section, it's about a third of its original width. Glowworms are running a risk of death crossing this path. But they cross this path not only to hunt in the hunting process, to get a last meal before pupation later in the spring, but they cross from the right hand side into the more open area so they can pupate and if it's female, attract a male. There's more to these little insects than what you might think. Well, there's a group of rather noisy linnets just flown over. I've now come through sections A, B and C and I'm about a third of the way up D. You may well be able to make out just a little slight kink to the left in the path. The kinks, not me. No glowworm larva as yet, which on the plus side is a good thing. At least there's not been any crushed under foot or wheel. But what I have seen just in front of me, there's a label down here. Come in, 96, your time is up. large label as well. I'm presuming this is possibly 2016 but it could be 2012 because I've just come across from the path there was a strong smell of fox. The smell of fox is very distinctive it's a real musty smell not particularly pleasant unless you're another fox of course. Right it's back across onto the path up to the top to the centre tree and then a waltz and mince around up there for a quarter of an hour. Probably look for some of these. And then we have a slow walk back down. Well, we've got one, and this is looking like female size. I'll put the ruler up against it. This one. Well, this one is measuring from head to tail as you look at it now. 
Not that they have tails, of course, but this one is good. See, that's just stretched. It's stretched even more, but technically for me, that's a 22 mil larva, that's sort of normal size. And this is just scuttling along, having a wheezy wander down the path. On the right hand side, as we come up, this is one that's going to make it. And you get a chance to see, see the head's retractable. It can disappear totally under the hood of that first segment. They are equipped with fish's jaws. And they have quite a, an interesting method of moving. This is top speed for a glowworm larva. As it wanders out of shot. You're not to being very professional there, Mr Pendleton. Sorry, I don't do professional. I'm presently at the junction of three survey sections. Section D, the top of Section D, which is marked by the centre tree, that's just behind the camera. Down there was Section J. Section J runs down into Section K and then further down into Section O. Along here is Section F. And just off where the highest point of Section F is, there's paths that go either side and down to the left there was section i section i was always a good section especially at the top of it quite often you'd get what we used to call a constellation of female glowworms constellation basically in glowworm terms being five or six females all within a small area quite remarkable to see and always it's an absolute joy this spot here reminds me of one particular night when under this roadstone here, there was a glowworm light. Upon further investigation, we found that the stone, it was a large stone, but on the track surface, it had become loose. So there was a gap of about half a centimetre or so. In that gap, and going down underneath the stone, was this female glowworm, and she was laying. There were numerous eggs under the stone, and I managed to collect the eggs and put them just on the bank here. Quite often we had glowworms along here but as this was the most sheltered and shaded section on the within the area glowworms always appeared here last. The season, the glowing season in many sections especially further down and lower down would have been long over sometimes by three weeks before the first glowworms appeared up here. It's very interesting, over the years, uh, these different survey sections became active in terms of female glowworms appearing. And in many instances, they became inactive as the females died out, they were all mated, or at least most of them. And then glowworms appeared up here. Purely because we're being under the trees, although technically it's warmer under the trees. There's a big difference between under trees, even trees that aren't in leaf. So when you're out in the open, there's often about a degree of difference, but it's a noticeable difference. And because of the shadiness, presumably there was enough food at, yeah, availability, but it was the shadiness that caused the lateness of glowworms to appear. Usually, this section and the section that ran on from this one glowworms were always usually the last ones that we had here but many sometimes didn't even appear till mid-july well the plan now then is to walk back through section d c b and a now depending how well i would do Hopefully we'll get at least another one. And given that the light's good, I may well get to the bottom of D and then come back up and have another look. So we'll see. Chances are I could walk back down here and not find another glowworm larva. 
one of the joys of invertebrate recording. Well, you might have a good idea what you're going to see, and you certainly know what you'd like to see. It doesn't always work out like that, and you have to come out again. What a shame. Apart from two joggers, I've not seen a soul. It's all right, I've not gone dumb. I was just listening. There's a noticeable change. Sometimes you don't realise changes at sight. But a number of times over the years, people have said, Trevor, you know, why do you go to the same site? Why do you walk up Clipson Hill Quarter night after night and see the same old stuff? Well, yeah, you do, but each time you go, you're accumulating data, valuable data. Data that nobody else is collecting. Data that can be left for the people in the future. That's how I look at it. So I always looked at it like that. But although you can visit the site on consecutive days, 365 days of a year, it changes every day. Or at least it'll offer you something different each day. Different, I suppose, if you look for it. In this case, I'm listening for it. The difference between tonight's video and one maybe a week ago, the last one I did, I mentioned there was a flock of red wing up there, and then they went off northwest, back home, effectively. Haven't had a red wing here since. Sometimes you could get, say, big accumulations of red wing, always at this western end of the Sherwood Forest Country Park and in Clipson Old Quarter, and they'd feed on the remnants of any holly berries that had fallen, and then they'd go off. They've already gone. There's a dodge chief chaff here in territory. And I heard one part call, just a brief snippet of call of song from Black Cat. But Black Cat's to me are late. I heard one the other day. That's it. It's funny how bird song you can record migration really from bird song because a lot of birds, a lot of the chiff chaffs that have been here may have come and gone. They'll sing briefly, sometimes they'll set up territory for a day or a couple of days and then move on. Or they'll stay. No two days or evenings are ever the same. Right, onwards and upwards and all that. Well, I found another one. Try and extricate the ruler. It's a metal ruler, so I have to be careful. Now, this one is smaller. And as you can see from there, it's we're right at the end of the lava there. And that is measuring 17 and the head is it's more or less fully stretched out almost uh, that's a good 17 mil lava excellent still in section D so that's another two that takes us up to 11 lava for 2022 four of which I think it is that have been found dead of dying, so we need to make sure this one is safely off the path. Someone has not long since walked down here. That's what they're like underneath. You can just about make out they have two little glowing plates at the end. It's unusual the glowing of glowworm lava in spring. We only ever saw it for a short period about two to three weeks before the emergence of the first females. And they always glow more in the late summer and autumn from sort of July onwards. 
why they don't glow. Even any hunting glows or feeding glows. Why they don't do that in spring. A mystery remaining to be solved. Isn't that a lovely shot of a path? Well, there's a late evening shot looking up towards the centre tree. It's 20 to 8. That's a philosk that's just flown across. That's another chiffy. There has been, say, a black cap called briefly on the left here. But two glowworm lava so far. The light is starting to go now, so I need to continue walking down through the rest of D and then C, B and A and then home. I might even treat myself to a little pint. Or I might have a big pint. I don't know yet. But to find two lava anyway, it's great. Slowly bumping the lava count up for this year. But it's still so poor in comparison to the lava counts had on this path in previous years. At the moment, this is, looks set to be the worst year ever. For lava on this path at Clipson Hog Water. But in order to confirm that, need to keep coming up here and making regular counts. In the meantime, I'll leave you with a bit of evening birdsong.